How can you believe in the rapture when the word rapture is not even in the Bible? If you have a Latin Bible, the word rapture is there. If you have a Greek Bible, uh, the word harpazo is there for rapture. Okay? If you have an English Bible in a newer translation, it may not, uh, uh, or most often says caught up. Two words. Two English words to describe one word rapture. Caught up. The word rapture means to actually be uh, quite suddenly and violently removed. It means to be taken out of or taken away from. Imagine this in your mind, being grabbed and like pulled off the train tracks. Because maybe you're walking down the train tracks and you're, and you're deaf. You can't hear that the train's coming and it's coming from behind you. To get raptured off the tracks is to be violently grabbed and taken away before the train destroys you, okay? So um, let's look at this. Let's look at what um, how is the rapture defined in Scripture? The rapture is not an odd thing. There are hints of it throughout Scripture. Uh, Isaiah 26, verses 19 to 21, is a pretty cool thing to look at in the Old Testament. But the rapture is the removal of the church. That's its function. The number one overwhelming rapture verse in the Scriptures regarding you and I. Are you ready? It comes from Jesus himself. Jesus is the first one to tell us about the rapture. I'm going to ask you to put these puzzle pieces together. Number one, Jesus. In John 14, verse 1, Jesus said to his disciples just before he returned in the great ascension of Christ back to heaven, he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, I, I would tell you, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, oh, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So let's march through this for a second. Jesus said, don't let your heart experience seismology, seismos. Don't have an earthquake of worry and of fear. Why? Because if you believe in God, believe also in me. That's the gospel. In my Father's house are many mansions. Well, whatever it entails, Jesus said, if it were not so, I would have told you. I'm not kidding. I'm not fooling around. Jesus is saying this is incredibly, happily, profoundly serious. I go to prepare a place for you. So whatever the rapture event that he's describing, it's defined this way. I'm giving you this promise. I'm leaving. I'm going somewhere, my father's house, because I'm going to prepare a place for you. In Texas, they would say, for you all. That's really good. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'm going to come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And when his father says to him, go, he's going to come and he's going to get you and I, or whoever, and he's going to take us to where he's been working. He's going to take us to where he's been preparing you get it? He's going to take us to where he's been building mansions. Revelation 3.10, Jesus says, Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour which shall come upon the world. The word implies the entire globe, the entire world, to test those who dwell on the earth. That's an amazing statement. That was given to the church at Philadelphia. Book of Revelation, Jesus says, I'm going to keep you from an hour that is going to come upon the earth that will test all those who are earth dwellers. That's a cool thing because we're not earth dwellers. You and I, we have our citizenship in heaven, says the Bible. We're only here working right now for Jesus.